In software development, flagging refers to marking data, events, or processes with a specific status or label to signal that something has happened, like an error or anomaly or a required action. Flags are used to trigger behavior, guide logic, or surface issues for humans to review. They can be purely internal to the system for automated handling, or they can be user-facing to prompt humans to do things, or they can be both. We're gonna cover some of the core concepts of flagging. We'll cover the types of flags you can have, basic flagging, advanced flagging with AI, and data validation flags. There are three main types of flags when you're building automations in Glide. There's the system flag, which is purely for the automation itself. In other words, no human intervention or observation is required. It's just for the automation backend. Then there's the advisory flag. This may be used by the system itself, but it's usually there to keep a human informed as to what is going on, even if no action is required. And then there's the intervention flag, which is where manual human intervention is required for the workflow or the work of the app to proceed. And you may well invent your own types of flags for your work. For example, you might have a human flag where a human might flag an item that then changes the way an automation runs. The way that you build and think about your flagging is of course totally dependent on the content and the data and the purpose of your project. For example, if you're building inventory management software, then you might flag delivery times that aren't possible or specific notes from customers or if a driver is available or not. Or if you're building a support ticketing system, you might flag agent availability or ticket priority or customer sentiment. And there are many different ways that you can create flags, but some of the main tools at your disposal are AI prompts in workflows, data validation, and empty states of relations. So let's take a look at each of these. If your workflow is straightforward, then the way that you check and flag things is also gonna be pretty straightforward. For example, if you're just checking whether a date is in the right format or whether someone has filled in a field or not, you can do this in just a few steps with or without AI. You might use an if then else column to check if a field is empty or to compare dates. For example, you could check if a due date is before today to flag something as overdue. And you can also flag to prompt a user to do something like review a value, complete missing info, or confirm a decision, even if the data isn't technically wrong. These basic flags essentially check against very set rules. Is the information missing? Is it true or false? Has the date passed, etc., etc. But when we build more complex workflows with more nuance, our flagging gets more complex too. So when you're building agents and trying to construct truly intelligent automation, you want your flags to be tightly integrated with the logic of your workflow. Instead of checking fields in isolation, you're defining clear and extensive validation rules and dependencies, like calculating a due date from the payment terms found on an invoice, or flagging when fields are missing so the AI can surface issues in a structured format, like JSON, which all can be then used programmatically later down the workflow. For example, in this invoice manager workflow, invoices get uploaded, the text is extracted, and then this AI step converts that extracted text to structured JSON. Now we talked about this prompt in another lesson, so let's take a closer look at how flagging is built into it. First of all, we ask for two additional key value pairs, a flag and then a flag response. The flag field is a Boolean of true false, and the flag response is the AI surfacing why it flagged that field. So how does the AI know what to put here? Well, Below, we give the AI field extraction guidelines. So let's scroll down to the bottom and look at what we say for flag and flag response. Firstly, we say that it has to be a Boolean by restricting it to only giving true or false values. Then we say to the AI, flag true only if a flag occurs in one of the other fields and don't flag if all of the other fields are returned as expected. So the flagging we give to the AI here is dependent on the other flags in the other parts of the prompt in the other field extraction guidelines. So let's have a look at those now. Let's scroll back up to the invoice number field extraction guidelines. Here we're giving basic field extraction instructions, but at the bottom here we have this phrase, value should never be blank, flag if no invoice number is found. So this is what would trigger our flag field down here. And this is really important. We're structuring our prompt well enough so that the AI can understand the different parts of it. The dependencies, if you will, for the different parts of this JSON that we're asking it to output. 
And finally, we have some validation rules down here that make this even clearer to the AI. This ensures the AI only sets flag false when all required fields meet their criteria. Otherwise, it sets flag true and populates the flag response with the issue. So this is an incredibly important node in this workflow. And once we've dialed in this flagging, we can use this structured JSON in many different ways, both in the data editor and for the rest of our workflow. So once the JSON is created and added to the processing result column in the data editor, we can then use query JSON columns in the data editor to pull out those values. Here we have the flag value and the flag response value that we saw earlier. If we click on the drop down on this column, we can find all the uses of this column. We'll see that it's being used by our invoice upload workflow. So if we click into that, we can see that the thing that's using it is this condition further down the workflow. This condition is saying that if the flag pulled out from our JSON that we made earlier with that AI step, if that flag is true and the user hasn't manually fixed this item, then an invoice will progress down this path. In other words, if there is any flag by the AI, then this will be where the invoice goes first. And the first thing that we do in this section is we set the value for this item, this row, to be flagged so that we can surface it for a human. And we'll talk more about this in the section on automating reviews. Let's go to the other condition. This one is looking for empty state-based errors. This isn't using a flag that was created by AI. It's simply looking to see whether AI was able to extract what it was supposed to. And if anything is missing, then it follows down this path. Now, for the last condition, if there are no content-based errors or empty state errors, then we check to see if the vendor has been correctly matched. And this is powered by the vendor flag column in the data editor. The vendor flag column is a great piece of data validation in this workflow. It's essentially an if then else column that lives in the data editor. In other words, it's not inside or being processed by our workflow. It's just using four different conditions to check the vendor status. If the vendor has been manually chosen by the user, then it will not flag because it assumes that the user is going to be knowing what they're doing in this app. Next, it cross checks the two separate AI steps that are trying to find the vendor in our workflow. And if these don't match, in other words, if this one is not the same as this one, then it's going to output a true value, which results in a flag. And this next criterion is actually really quite important. Although, so we're using these two AI steps in the workflow editor to cross check. Essentially, we think if they both get it right, then it's very likely that it's the right vendor. If one of them gets it different to the other one, then we need to check it. You know, if there's an issue with both of them, we need to check it. Um, but in very, very rare cases, it could be that both AI steps totally hallucinate a vendor name that's not on the invoice, like they make it up some random new vendor name. It's very unlikely, but we need to have a, con a contingency plan for that. And so this criteria here in the if then else column looks to see whether there is a relation between the name that the AIs chose and our existing database of vendors. In other words, if both the AI is totally hallucinated and made up the same name, but that name is not in our existing database, then it will still flag for a human to review. In other words, it won't allow the workflow to add an invoice to QuickBooks with a made up name. So we've looked at the core concepts behind flagging, a really, really essential part of building intelligence into your automations. We covered the types of flags, system, advisory, and intervention flags. We looked at the main ways that you can create flags through AI prompts, conditions, and empty states. And we looked at how to build our workflows around the flags that we create with conditions and extra data validation steps like our vendor match column. One final piece of advice for building these very mission critical workflows is that if your extra AI steps that are there to sort of fix errors that happen further up the chain, if they end up actually fixing errors and getting the work done without a human needing to sort of review or do extra work, it's still a good idea to surface that to the user, even if it was fixed. For example, here we set the status to flagged and then try to fix the issues. So it could be here that after we've set the status to flagged, the issues are actually fixed by AI on the second run but we deliberately leave that status for a human to see. In other words, we built a workflow that tried to do a thing, failed to do it maybe, flagged to a human, hey, look, there was an issue here, 
then fixed the issue, but left the flag there just so that a human could be aware because the second fix might actually not be a total fix. So it's good to always try and keep a human in the loop, but do the work for them.